Wendy shop. Today in this tutorial we'll be finishing up this tunic and um, it should be so much fun. Thanks for dropping by my channel. I really appreciate it. This is really your place to learn all things related to wool, whether it's Nuno felt, wet felting, um, needle felting, dye techniques, making your dyes, echo printing, it's all here. So thank you for joining us. Um, I got my cool shoes. So you can make shoes too. <laughs> it's so much fun. Anyways, this in this video we're going to be finishing up the tunic. We're going to be doing 3D elements. We're going to be doing ruffles. We'll teach you ruffles on the top or if you want to put them on the bottom of your tunic. Uh, or if you want to do even a collar, same technique, you can use it. We'll be finishing up how to do seams, how to do necklines, how to do sleeves. And I'll be even, uh, well, no, the last one I talked about different types of sleeves. But we'll be getting into all of that right now. Sit back and if you watch the, the whole video, there's an extra little bonus for you at the end. Okay. Don't sneak over to the end, <laughs> okay? Just watch the whole video, and uh, and I want to hear your comments, too. Give me a like if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe if this is the sort of stuff you're into. Thanks for visiting. Let's get into it. Okay, so now I'm starting to work on my central design motif. And remember earlier I told you that I was looking at some jelly prints? Well... <laughs> never liked a jelly prints, Google jelly prints is pretty cool. It's using with gelatin, but I thought I'm going to use that same sort of layering concept with different textures in my Nuno felting. So I took that fabric there that is a non-felting mesh fabric and I cut out my fish here that is reminiscent of the other artist's uh, herring fish that she did. And now, since this is so open weave, it should be very easy to incorporate in my Nuno felting. So I've taken some of my um, dyed silk and I put it underneath the, um, the tail there because I want to, um, want to create a flowing effect. And just, I'm going to have to be kind of careful that I don't felt this onto that, but I don't think I will since this is, this bottom part is already pretty felted. So even if it does get felted, I could just rip it off. So I'm going to get that to connect on there. And I'm going to get some of my colored fibers on my tail. I do want some of this texture on here, but I don't want it all on my tail. I want it mostly over here on my um, other thing. And I am going to have to put some across here so that this will actually stay on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or else it'll never go on. It has to be really spread out so that it'll interlock. And let's just work on this tail section first, then we'll move on to this. But uh, let me show you, you can cheat a little bit. If you're unsure and you're doing a very delicate pattern, you could just take your needle felt, uh, needles, and you could uh, very gently go along here and kind of tack them into place. That way, when you go to, you know, gently bring your hand across it and start to tangle up those fibers, they won't swirl everywhere and mess up your whole design motif. And, that and we're going to zoom in and go down a little bit. And then we're going to show you all this. Now this is all of the white fiber that I put down first before the colored fiber. Remember that? Remember when I took this beautiful alpaca and I put it down before I put down this other stuff? Well, it went right on through and it grabbed. But what I'm going to show you now is what's called a laminating technique. So some people, when they noodle felt, they actually put wool on both sides. 
and they laminate the uh, fabric. So we're just going to do a little bit like that right here. Now I probably should just put my undyed fiber um, because, you know, dyed fiber is more expensive than undyed fiber. And plus this was a free gift from uh, my friend uh, Karen that she just put in when I ordered like a whole fleece. Oh, I ordered the most beautiful gray fleece from her that I crocheted and knitted into a, um, well, first I spun it, then I crocheted and knitted it into a scarf that I get tons of compliments on. And it is so gorgeous. Most people have never seen alpaca. That's how sad the state of the world is. They don't know luxury fibers because you don't see it at, you know, Walmart or even, you know, even like Macy's and stuff. They, you have to go to someplace higher end like Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, or go into Couture Wear before you're going to start seeing luxury fibers used in such abundance like that. But if you learn how to do these things, it's not very difficult. You too can have gorgeous luxury fibers, and I mean gorgeous, for not that much money. It's just, it takes, takes a ton of time to spin it and then knit it and crochet it. But you can do that, right? You're awesome enough. It might take you a little while, but might not. Maybe you're super fascinator and crocheter. Okay, so there we go. We're getting some ruffle, which is what I wanted for my fish. I'm so happy with that. Now, the rest of this fish, I want to be a little bit browner. You know, I want to have this, I want to migrate this brown up here. See how I can do that? That's not fully in there yet. I want to encourage the brown to stay over here. In fact, I'm going to get my dark brown alpaca because you know the alpaca blends really well. Oh wait, Karen also sent me some gray. Well, we'll just use that because she even washed this for me. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so now I've put on some of my, some of my gray alpaca from my buddy, Karen. You didn't know I appreciated you this much, did you, Karen? She'll find out when she sees the video. Oh, wait a second. You know what? I want some brown in there, too. Some glorious brown. Or sort of copper. This fish is sort of swimming through the ocean. Has a little bit of that blended in. Man, I love that. I'm going to need to put another fin on this fish, too. Right about there. So maybe I should set that up also. So let me pause and I'll set that up. So, newbie YouTube maker errors. I was getting so involved in my project that I wasn't uploading each time I finished a small section and I ran out of space. So you guys, I filmed all this, but none of it's saved. So basically, let's give you a rundown on what I did here. You saw how I made the fins um, by just placing some wool on either side of it and felting it up and getting it locked on there. That was super easy. Now the other things that I did is I put a whole bunch of uh, little silk fibers throughout his body because when it dries it'll shine, it'll have a nice sheen and it'll be amazing. The other thing I did is I happened to have some silk sari um, uh, yarn here and I put that on there and I what I did in order to make it stay on there is I took clouds of alpaca and merino and placed it underneath and slightly over in some spots. Uh, this one's over, this one's under, uh, right there. So I put it over and under in different spots of my silk sari um, yarn, and that made it stick on there really well. So I can do a little pull test. This part's not felted on. 
but this is, see? So it has some movement, and I might do some stitching, or I might just leave it like that, I don't know. Um, but it's definitely locked in on certain spots, like up here. Can you see up there? Mm, like up here, for sure, it's completely locked in. So I'm getting some nice action. Oh, it's really locked in right there. Boy, it, I'm telling you, that alpaca really grabs on. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. If you're an alpaca hater, you need to get on board and start loving these super fine alpaca. So here we go. I just moved all my work up. Now I have the bottom edge of the fabric down here. And uh, we just uh, repeat the process. So I want to put the colored fiber first so you can kind of see what's going on here. I'm just laying thin, thin bits. Okay, you kind of want your fiber spread out. Um, makes it easier to felt. You don't ever want to try to felt a big clump. It just does not work, okay? So the finer you can pull it out, the more spread out it is, the easier and faster it will be. Do a little bit of that. And I want to... So don't leave, because I've got lots to show you still i.e. how to marry these seams together to make the seamless tunic, how to finish your sleeves, and how to make the ruffle on the bottom. Okay. Okay, now we've pretty much felted this whole piece that you will see is a rectangle, basically. So what we want to do before we flip it over and start working on the back is we want to examine all of our work surface. We want to make sure that you do a little pinch test here and there, especially where you might have larger clumps of wool, um, to make sure that that took. Okay, now where it doesn't matter uh, so much that you do this is on the edges, because on the edges you're going to have... Uh, that's where you're going to marry your seams, and so if you're not super felted on here, that would be great because that makes it easier um, to marry the seams together and have those fibers interlock with fibers on the back side and make your seamless tunic. Okay? So, um, so what some people do if they are making... Oh, here's a little spot. Well, no. Yeah, I guess it's this on there. So what some people do when they're making a cloak or they're making a long uh, scarf is at this stage they would pick it all up and they would start wrapping up, throwing it down on the table and fulling it. We're not going to do that because uh, we want to not shrink this before we marry it to the back. We will do all of the rolling and fulling and slapping it around and and all of that rough stuff uh, when we've perfected the bottom part and then we make sure that our we've got our ruffles where we want them and everything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flip all of this, but you have to keep the bubble wrap uh, in between the two. Okay, let me get all this out of the way. It's just going super, super fast. So you see, I've, I've actually cut this in a curve because that's how I want it to go. Now, I cut this further out than the actual, if you peek under here, can you see? This is the edge of my template tunic, but I put the edge of my bubble wrap way out here. Why? To account for the shrinkage. Okay, because that's all going to shrink, so I've got that much space which is, let's put it out here for you guys, which is a good four inches off from my template. And by the way, my template doesn't stretch, so if your template is a knit top, add even more um, right there, okay? So I'm going to, before I do this, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this, and I'm going to have I'm going to have fiber on this side. I'm going to wrap the one from the front over here so that it's in, so I've got the silk, the fiber, the silk, and then I put more fiber on top of it. Now, not a lot, guys. You don't need a ton. You need it to still be wispy. If you put globs on there, you are not helping yourself. You're actually making it harder and probably and probably you're going to end up spending a lot of time needle felting. You need it to be just super wispy, okay? Just super wispy. And I'm going to leave this little hole up here open. Uh, but if I closed it, it wouldn't be a big deal because I would just cut it open later. So, and then finish off the edges with some extra felting. So, you know, do it whatever way you want. If you feel more comfortable closing it up because you're not exactly sure where you want your armholes to be, then that's cool. There is no wrong answer, okay? That's what I want to emphasize to you. You cannot mess this up because it is your unique creation. And sometimes it's really cool to have unusual things. There are a lot of wonderful art books um, on pattern making uh, out of Japan that is mostly focused on knit, but it's all about wearing your garments in an unusual way. So like the neck hole can also be the armhole. It's really fascinating. I should go look through my library and bring that book out for you guys. It's fascinating. So, but what that tells me is, hey, embrace these unusual things. Those are the things that make your artwork break away from other people's artwork. And they'll say, oh, I know that's so-and-so's work because they do such avant-garde stuff. Okay, so if yours <laughs> is unusual, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Okay, so here's my section. I've got enough soap on this now that I'm not going to stick. And I can feel the bubble wrap. So I'm just going to go like this with my hand. Okay, so let's check this seam now. See, this is the, fr the front. This is the back. This is the seam, and it's completely done. So if I stick, were to stick my hand in here, this would be a completely seamless front to back edge. Very, very easy. See? See? It's totally easy. Okay, so this is going so fast. I thought I better stop what I'm doing and, uh, and update the people and film it. So I've been working on this seam over here, and boy, is it looking great. So you can see it's puffier, because I have the bubble wrap there. And underneath here, further in, I have my template. So when I'm felting, I can, I can feel over here the bubble wrap, and I can also feel uh, right here in this ridge where my template is underneath here. So if you're not using a felt template, you might want to just... Um, maybe put some toweling or something directly underneath the top that you're using as a guide, unless, of course, you are just doing measurements. Now, I did get out my old trusty uh, measuring tape. I measured my bust. My bust is 47 inches, so uh, slightly more than half of that was 24 inches. So, right now... This whole thing is 33 inches. So I've given myself one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches to shrink this way. And I completely think that's doable. So um, we will work on that in the fulling. So I just want you to be aware of that. This is much, much, much wider right now than it will be uh, when it's fully. Done. Now, how do we know? Well, when this is done, it's going to pucker up. It's going to have quite a bit of texture. Um, so, And we've left quite a bit of empty space in here that we can have it pucker. So we'll be fine with the, with that. And if not, then it'll be a little bit bigger, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll be just fine. Now up here, I took the front and I folded it over here. So... Let's do a little 
test over here. Let's zoom in so that you can see that top corner. Let me get you zoomed. Okay, so here's the top corner, and we want to test this after we've done it. So let's give it a let's give it a nice test. And yep, this even if I pull on, I can see the felt or the the fold over of the silk right here. And if I pull on that, it's not coming apart. Even if I pull up here, and this part could actually come apart because I'm going to be cutting my armhole out there, so it's not a big deal. here. And what I'm going to end up doing, I think, is folding underneath at the last stage, um, you know, kind of turning this inside out. So I do definitely want some to hang off the edge. That way my edges will be finished um, in the end. So this section needs to get cut my handy dandy little scissors here. And I've already made sure that this uh, is more than double the width of the base of my tunic before it's fold. So I should be fine in terms of having enough to go in the front of the tunic since this is the back. And let's put a little bit more fiber on here. I'm going to save my super pretty fiber for the front, though. Um, this is some of my uh, sort of oatmeal-colored alpaca. I'll put that on there. It kind of reminds me of sand. And actually, there's still a lot of curl in this because it's not carded, so it could be even foaming. I wish I had pure white. I probably have some pure white down in the basement. But there's a lot of brown in this, so just put that on there. Make sure that these little pieces are not globs, okay? And spread them out. And I probably need even a little bit more to tack on there. Keep it really wispy, people.
Okay, so just to make sure that this ruffle is completely, utterly, thoroughly, absolutely, positively, totally secure, I'm going to laminate this. When I say laminate, that means it's going to have a fiber, in this case alpaca, on both sides of both elements of the silk. So I've got alpaca fiber, silk gauze, alpaca fiber, silk abode, alpaca fiber, and some merino. on. The, so it's got like multiple layers together. So it'll be uber, uber, uber strong. So it could never, ever get snagged on anything, pulled, yanked on, pulled off, nothing. Um, and I want to get a good pucker too. So I want to have enough wool there, or enough fiber in this case, since it's not, you know, it's alpaca. I need to have enough fibers so that they'll interlock uh, a lot and really squeeze closely together and um, and pucker. So that because that's what I'm going for. So I'm gonna just put one more layer on the underside. So this is here's the underside, and under here. I have some bubble wrap so that I'm when I'm putting pressure on it, I'm not sealing it to the top of there. I don't want to do that. Ah, I'm gonna get my little. I have enough water. Oh, barely. My little air compressing thing. If you've been wondering what that is, it's just air compressing sprayer. I'm gonna wet that. Again, take your net so that the fiber doesn't stick to you. Ah. Put that over it. And I'll do it one last time and then we'll get into the fulling. Okay? And it'll be awesome. Okay, so what I did is I took this inside the house, and <laughs> you can see it's dripping wet, because I rinsed out a good portion of all the soap that was in there, um, because now we're going to get down to fulling. And when you full, which is rolling to shrink your wool, you really don't want that much soap in there, um, because now the point is to make those fibers grab together. And if you have so much soap in there, uh, they'll slip around and they won't grab as much. So we're going to take this whole warm, wet <laughs> tunic that still has the bubble wrap in it. And we're going to lay it out and we're going to start to roll it. Now, um, my bubble wrap might get popped in this process, but that's okay because uh, bubble wrap is cheap. i got lots of it. Now it's time to shrink this down to size. I had this wrapped up in the whole towel and I was like, ah, gee whiz, this is not working well. This really grabs uh, hold of something that's wrapped tightly around the, the rolling pin. Maybe I should show you this really quick. So I want to shrink this. I took the bubble wrap out because I'm like, eh, it's not going to felt in between there because there's no wool right in between there. So um, here's my packet really. I'm going to cut out the neck and the arms later. But I've got my tunic starting, but it needs to shrink this way. So I need to roll it this way on my on my um, rolling pin. Let's roll it up. I have a textured rolling pin that is for felting. Um, I found this one in an antique shop. I actually sell textured rolling pins in my Wool Envy store, and I will put the link on the bottom. But it's basically WoolEnvyStudio.com. And, uh, and a ruble, but it's not this long. It's a little bit shorter um, so that it ships in a flat rate shipping box. That's why. And it works really well. So what you do is you just put your <clears throat> weight on here and these hooks kind of grab onto the 
your teeth grab on there and you roll it and it works awesome and if you'll look at my other videos where I'm making shoes you'll see how I use it to correct mistakes in felting also we just didn't have any mistakes in this process so we didn't need to use it plus um, I'm using a lot less fiber in Nuno felting than I would in traditional wet felting Okay, so I put a plastic garbage bag over my mannequin so that I could put this on. And actually, while you guys were not looking, I already put this on there so I could determine where the neck is going to be. And I found out that I needed to um, strengthen up this seam here on the shoulder. So I laid down some more fiber and I did that. Now I'm just sort of working on this neckline. I've got my hand stuck into the top and I'm going alongside the neckline. And I'm just, uh, you know, kind of firming it up. Um, I don't care if there's a little bit of pieces without any, um, you know, fiber covering it because I kind of just think that that's cool to show some, some rawness. So kind of, so people who see it can kind of get an idea since most people have not seen Nuno felting, it'll make it easier to explain when I'm walking around town and they go, what are you wearing? And I can um, introduce them to the joys of felt. And what is Nuno felt? Now, if you've watched all the way this far, you know now that Nuno felting is simply pushing uh, fibers you know, animal fibers that felt like wool, alpaca, camel, yak, even dog hair will actually felt. Did you know that? Protein fibers. Um, pushing those through uh, woven fabric very lightly and then making a new fabric out of it. Isn't that the coolest thing? So over here is a little hole for the beginning of my shoulder. I'm actually going to enlarge this because obviously my, <laughs> my shoulder <laughs> and upper arm is bigger than that, but I'm just going to work on this little section right here. What I like about this is it can get a little wild looking, and that's what I enjoy. I don't want it to be uh, a perfect, I don't want it to look like it was made from sewn fabric. I want people to know that I made this fabric. So if it's a little raw, and shaped funny, then all the better in my mind. So that's all we're going to do for here. I'm going to take a little update and look down here at my, um, down here we're already getting the puckering. Now I'm still going to roll this a little bit more, but do you see how that, you see the beauty of that puckering right there? That's just the fibers grabbing hold of that and those different spaces of the silk and just puckering it. Now if I roll some more up here this will pucker too um, but I really love the pucker of that. So that's what you do. You keep rolling, rolling, rolling and as it felts it, you'll get more and more texture and that is the beauty of felting. So remember how I talked about your surprise at the end? You did you remember how I was using these, the textured rolling pin and the ruble? Well, guess what? Um, I sell these types of things in my shop, and I had my woodworker make some tiny ones for my needle felted figures uh, because I want to make some stop motion animation with them felting. And I thought, how much fun would that be for you guys? So he made me a bunch of them. So I'm going to have some to give away. But I'm only giving them away to people who comment, like, share, and subscribe. I have a special secret program. <laughs> Too, buddy. That, um, that allows me to pick a winner when you um, comment and stuff. So I can, like, you know, make it. Pick a winner from subscribers, pick a winner from commenters and stuff like that. So I'm looking for people to help me share my beautiful message of awesome felt. And if that person is you, you and a cute little ruble and a textured rolling pin that you can use for jewelry, props, 
whatever, stop motion filmmaking. It could be so much fun. The possibilities are limitless. Talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like.